My name is Lauren and I'm a naturalist with Nebraska Game and Parks and I am here today to address the first wild what's up questions. So first of all, what is that? What is wild what's up? Um, it's a really cool email address actually that you can send an email to and a naturalist from Nebraska Game and Parks, that's right, experts on nature, will respond to your email um, with any nature related questions you can think of. Questions about plants, questions about animals, questions about habitats or biodiversity or even the parks uh, with Nebraska Game Parks. So that email is ngpc.wildwhatsup at nebraska.gov. So with that, let's get into our first questions for the week. Our first questions come from Anthony, who is six years old and he's from Omaha, Nebraska. So first of all, thanks Anthony for sending in your questions. Um, Anthony, whether he knew it or not, had some really cool questions for the month um, because April is actually National Frog Month. That's right, a whole month dedicated to how cool frogs are. Now, it's interesting because toads are a type of frog. So all toads are frogs, but not all frogs are toads. Toads are a special subset of frogs. And his questions were about toads specifically. So his first question was one we get a lot, and that is why is toad's skin covered in bumps? What are those bumps? So I got my toad friend here, and you'll see that their skin is, is really bumpy, and a lot of people used to think that these were warts, and in fact, there is a myth that if you pick up a toad, you can catch warts from a toad, from handling a toad. Now, of course, that is not true. Um, warts are something that you catch from another human being. You can't catch them from a toad, but those bumps are really important to, to the animal. And what they are is a special structure called a gland. Now we have glands in our body, right? We have glands in our armpits that produce sweat. We have glands in our hair and on our head that produces our oils and keeps our skin nice and um, healthy. And it's the same thing with toads. So their bumps on their skin produces special substances that keeps their skin moist and healthy and protected. Another thing these bumps do is produce a special type of poison which I'll talk about later in the next clip. Okay, so Anthony's next question is about poison. And it is, um, his question is, do toads produce or have poison? And the answer is actually yes. All toads in Nebraska um, have some sort of poison um, that is used as an anti-predator defense. So toads have a couple ways that they can try to not be eaten. One way is if you pick up a toad and it gets really scared and might like puff up like a balloon, it gets all full of air, like, hey, I'm actually really, really big, you don't wanna try and eat me. Um, another thing it'll do is release a bunch of fluid from its body. So if you've ever been peed on by a toad, um, it's not necessarily urine because it's really watered down, but it does come from the toad's bladder. So it's kind of like pee. And that's to use to kind of surprise an animal to be like, oh, hey, maybe I don't wanna eat this. And its third line of defense, and perhaps the most potent, is uh, the toxin or poison that it creates, which is generally called a bufotoxin. Um, so toads in the genus um, uh, that's called bufonidae uh, create this poison or toxin in their skin. So it is created in those bumps on their skin through those glands, but it also is created and released in large amounts through some glands that are right behind his eyes. So on this toad right here, it'd be kind of like right here, and that's called a parotid gland, and that's what creates most of that poison. This poison is used as an anti-predator defense, and thankfully in Nebraska, it's not gonna really hurt humans unless you eat a bunch of toads. So it's probably the best idea, it's probably best practice to not eat toads. Um, now, if your dog or a cat catches a toad outside, you might have to take it to the veterinarian. Sometimes they can get kind of sick, but mostly it just upsets their stomach a lot. Now, there are toads in other countries, and even in the southern United States, that have a much more potent toxin. And this could make you sick or give you a rash even if you touch the toads. So if you're ever in a place where you don't know what kind of amphibians, frogs, or toads in the area, it's always best to just not handle them. Um, we always tell people this of all amphibians, amphibians being toads, frogs, and salamanders, because they have this skin that is, it's called semi-permeable, which basically means their skin can absorb different chemicals and things in the environment that's water-based. So 
if, I don't know if you knew this or not, one really cool thing about frogs and toads is they can drink water just by sitting in a puddle of it. They literally just absorb it through their skin. They don't have to drink it with their mouth. So same thing goes for if we're handling a toad and we have something um, on our hands, such as hand sanitizer or soap or lotion, that toad is going to absorb it through its skin. So it's always best for toads and all amphibians if you don't handle them to begin with. Um, but especially if you're in some of these other areas, know that, that that toad toxin could affect you. But at the end of the day, the takeaway is don't eat toads. So with that, that wraps up our questions for the week. Don't forget we will be posting these videos every week and answering your questions on these videos. So if you do have any questions, once again, that email is ngpc.wildwhatsup at nebraska.gov. And our naturalists, that's right, the nature experts, will make sure to answer your questions and you might see your question come up on one of our videos. Until then, it is so important to get outside, do some hiking, look for birds, look for insects, toads, frogs, and explore your natural world, even if it's just in your backyard. And once again, if you have questions, go ahead and email us. Have a great day, guys.